Hi guys, um, I just thought I'd do a little tutorial to how to make banana bread from my kitchen to yours. So I'm just going to talk through some of the things that you might need before you get started. You should have had a list of this already, but just in case you missed it, here we go. So to make a banana loaf, you'll need two very ripe bananas. If you look at these, it doesn't matter if they're looking a bit manky, quite brown. Um, that's probably the best state to have them in. You'll need two eggs. Don't worry too much about what size, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, you'll need some soft butter. If you don't have like a spreadable butter like I've got here, you can use just normal butter and if you just shove it in the microwave for a few seconds on defrost, it softens. But please make sure that is in a, like a microwave safe container when you do that. Um, you'll need a teaspoon of baking powder. You'll need um, some self-raising flour, some caster sugar and a little bit of milk. Um, I've got over here as an optional, just mainly because I don't like the taste of bananas, some white chocolate that you could chop and add in, or you could alternatively add maybe a teaspoon of some cinnamon or sweet mixed spice, and that would make it taste a bit different. Um, if we come over to the equipment you might need, I've got this two pound loaf tin. Um, if you don't have one of these, but have like a cupcake case tin, you can use that instead. That will affect the time ins, but I think if you pop them in the oven for about 12 minutes, and just test with a skewer, um, you probably get quite nice results anyway. Um, you'll need a weighing scales, but once I've measured out my ingredients, um, I will say roughly how much it is in cups, just in case you don't have one of these available. Um, a measuring jug or a bowl, I'm just using this because it's quite a good size to squash the bananas in, um, but if you've just got a normal bowl, that will do. Um, a mixing bowl and a spoon. It, this can be a wooden spoon um, or like one of these plastic spatulas that I quite like using. Um, then you'll need a fork, that's for squashing the bananas, um, a teaspoon and a tablespoon for measuring out some of the dry ingredients. Um, I've just got this bowl here to discard the eggshells once I've finished, and a skewer. Now I don't have like a baking skewer, but this is one of the ones, you know, you can push the meat off a barbecue um, kebab, and that works just fine. Um, if you don't want to have one of these, you can just poke the top of the cake or ask an adult to help you because it might be hot um, and you should be able to tell if it's done or not. Okay, so getting started then. Those of you who've baked with me at school before know the two key instructions before we can touch any of the ingredients. Um, so just a reminder in case any of you have forgotten or haven't cooked with me yet. First thing is if you've got long hair, make sure it's tied or clipped back just so it's out of your way. Um, you don't want any of that in the food, it won't taste very nice. And secondly, uh, you need to wash your hands. So we just go over to the sink now. You can see my little plant that I've planted. Okay, that was a bit quick, but I've already washed my hands before the video, so that should do for now. Um, usually also, I would wear an apron. I've left mine at work so just make sure that you're wearing something clean and something that you don't mind getting a bit dirty in case some of the cake batter um, splashes on your clothes um, but it'll all come out in the wash so nothing to worry about okay so first step then um, the first thing I tend to do is combine the wet ingredients and then after that I measure out the dry ingredients so into this jug I'm just going to put my two very ripe bananas not a fan of these but taste bad after it's in the cake. I think everything tastes better in cake form. This is something that's really good to encourage doing with maybe brothers and sisters if you have any of those or some other family in your household. It's a good family activity. So then I'll just show you if you just use the fork to squash the bananas and it'll go into kind of like a puree. It might be a little lumpy, but that doesn't matter in the scheme of things. So just do your best. It's a good old mix until they're all squished. Sounds quite squelchy. If it sounds squelchy, you're doing it right. Okay, so that's mashed enough there. Okay, after that, into the same jug, I'm going to crack my two eggs. So to do this, 
I'm going to hold the egg in one hand and hold the side of my bowl with the other so there's no spillages. I'm going to tap it on the side just hard enough so that it cracks a little. Okay, so can you see there's a bit of a crack? And I'm going to use my thumbs to pull apart the shell so it's in two fragments. Okay? And then I tip it into my egg mixture. Oh, I used the bowl for the eggshells, never mind. Okay, next egg. Tap, tap until there's a crack. And tip it into the bowl. Now, if you get a bit of eggshell in there, it doesn't matter. You can just get a teaspoon to fish that out, or you can even use the side of the eggshell. So it is not a disaster. Okay, so it should look like this now. And I'm just then going to lightly whisk the egg with my fork just to break down that yolk and the white together and then I'm going to mix it into the banana mixture okay right next step is the milk so let's just look at my recipe we need two tablespoons of milk so a tablespoon that's the big one here Okay, and I'm just going to hold this spoon over the jug in case it spills and pour my milk very carefully. Now you might want an adult to help with this and maybe you can hold the spoon and the adult can pour because sometimes milk cartons can be a bit heavy. So, okay, one, two. And then you just give it another little mix. Okay, so that's my wet ingredients combined for now. Um, the butter I'll add a bit later on, even though I suppose that's kind of a wet ingredient when it's softened. Okay, so now for the bit, it gets a bit more complicated. Um, so I'm going to start weighing out the dry ingredients. I think I'll start with the flour first, um, because that's what we need the most of, and that will be 225 grams, and it's the self-raising flour. And that just means that the cake will rise nicely. It won't be too dense and stodgy, hopefully. So I've got my scale set up here and I've got the little arrow pointing to the zero. Now, if I want 225 grams, this big line here, that represents 100. Then we've got the 200 here. And can you see the first little line just after the 200 on the top dial? that will be 225 grams. So I'm just going to carefully pour my um, self-raising flour out until it gets to that point, and then we know we've got the right amount. If you're a bit worried about pouring this, because it might come out too fast, you can use um, a clean, dry tablespoon to keep adding it gradually to your scales. Oh, nearly there. There we go, maybe a little bit more than we needed, but that's okay. It finishes off my bag of flour, so we'll just have a bit extra there today. Okay, so I'm gonna pour this now into our mixing bowl where all of the ingredients are gonna go. And then that leaves the scales free for my next lot of dry ingredients. So I pop it back onto the scale, make sure it's set back to zero, and now it's time for sugar. So we need 175 grams of sugar. So that means we're going to the first big line here, which is 100, and then one, two, three of those little lines. Okay, so the little line just before 200 grams. And that will be 175 grams of cast sugar. So that's what I'm using. Oh, it might be worth mentioning as well, if you've got a gluten intolerance or someone in your family does, um, you can do this recipe just with some gluten-free flour, so don't worry, you can still get involved. Let's have a little look. I find it's best just to crouch down so that you're level with the scales when you're reading the, the amount you've poured. It makes it a bit easier. So it doesn't have to be exact, it'll still taste pretty good, even if it's a few grams more or less. I think that's about right. There we go, so we're going to add this into our flour. 
Um, so if you were measuring this out in cups, I would say the flour would be about one and a half cups, and um, the sugar would probably be about one cup. Okay. Okay, now for the baking powder. So I'm not going to use the scales anymore. Um, this is what our baking powder looks like. You may get it in like a sachet or something, but it doesn't matter too much. And I'm just going to use one teaspoon, so not too heaped. Um, I'll show you now. So you can just tap on the edge. So I'm just going to use about that much. Okay, I'm going to add that in. Right. So I'm going to move that to the side. I'm going to measure out the butter now, and then we're going to mix it all together, which is the fun part. So our recipe says we need 100 grams of softened butter, and we're just going to add that in the same way we've measured out the flour and the sugar. But I'm going to scoop it with a spoon so I don't get my fingers all messy. I think I need another dollop. A little bit more. Nearly there. Oh, I'm a very small piece. And that should do just fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add the butter into the powdered mix. Make sure I scrape all of it out there. Don't leave any in the scales. And I'm going to also pour in this banana, egg and milk mix. It doesn't look very tasty, but it will be by the end. Yeah, so again, scrape all of that out there. We don't want to leave any of our mixture in the jug or bowl, whatever you're using. And then we need to mix it all together. Now, what I recommend you do is you could do this sitting on the floor if the floor's nice and clean so it doesn't spill off a counter, or make sure you hold very carefully with one hand and stir gently with the other hand. Okay, so it's quite a good idea to start slowly so it doesn't splash over the edge. And then once it's all combined, that's when you need to use a bit of elbow grease to make sure you've got all those lumps out. Okay. Make sure you scrape all the way around so we don't get flour left. Can you see from the top it looked like it was all combined, but underneath there's still a lot of my dry mixture. So I need to give it a good stir. Now the recipe that we're using today said that you need to do this for about two minutes until it's well combined but if you've got like a food processor or a blender you could use one of those with your family and it would speed up the process a little bit personally I quite like doing it the old-fashioned way get a greater sense of achievement so keep going There might be a few lumps of banana that was not quite mushed, but that doesn't matter. As long as you don't have lumps of flour, that's the main thing. So. so I've still got a few lumps of butter I can see here, so I just need to give it another mix, make sure it's all combined. to mention we need to preheat the oven so it's still time to do that so not to panic um, and the oven if you've got a gas oven it needs to be gas mark 4 um, otherwise it's either 180 degrees celsius or 350 degrees fahrenheit so i'm just going to set mine now and then i'll go back to mixing oven so I've just put mine down a little bit um, because sometimes my oven cooks quite quickly but I'm sure an adult will be able to help you with the timings okay 
So that should do. It doesn't need to be perfect because there will be little lumps of banana, but that's what it should look like. So what we're gonna do now, because I personally don't like plain banana cake, we're gonna um, add a bit of chocolate to this recipe. Um, usually I would add chocolate drops um, or chocolate chips, but they didn't have any of those. So I just bought this, just like a cheap bar of white chocolate from Tesco. Um, it doesn't have to be like fancy stuff. Um, you won't taste it in the, the cake anyway. So I'm just gonna open it. You can put as much or as little as you want really, but I think I'll probably put about half a bar in. And to do this, you can either break it into little pieces, um, but what I tend to do, just so I get really little pieces and they're not massive chunks, um, I tend to cut mine with a sharp knife. So this is something you'll probably need an adult to do for you or be very careful and have an adult supervising you. Um, so I'll show you a safe method to do it if you're going to be doing it with, with your family. So if you get a piece of your chocolate and you hold it in the bridge method, so that means you have your finger one side and your thumb the other, and then you put the knife in between and press down so that your finger and thumb are nowhere near the blade. But I really do recommend probably older siblings or your parents or uncles, grandparents do that for you, okay? So I'm just gonna chop this up into little pieces. But if you've got chocolate chips or buttons or something like that, it's probably easier just to use those if you can find any. Okay, so that should do. So what I'm gonna do now is just scoop them up, pop them in up to our mixture and give it a stir so that they're not all at the top. Mix in the chocolate. I mean, you could do this with any type of chocolate. So if you like dark chocolate or milk chocolate, you could use that instead. Um, or this is the time where if you wanted to add maybe some sweet mixed spice or some cinnamon, you could add some of that. And I'd recommend um, just over half a teaspoon probably, otherwise it might be a bit overpowering. Okay, so then your next step, if you've got a loaf tin, um, I have these like paper bits that can go in to stop it sticking. If you don't have those, you can use just normal greaseproof paper or you can rub a bit of butter around the edges to stop it sticking. And then you're just going to very carefully pour this in. For some of you it might be easier to use like a ladle or a spoon to put this in. But I'm just going to pour it for time reasons. Make sure we get that all the goodness into the tin for baking. Okay, so once you've done it, it should look something like this and then it's time to put in the oven. Now the time is quite long for cooking this, I think because there's a lot of wet ingredients so it takes a little while to dry it out. It's about an hour um, but I will post like a recipe um, so you can have a look and refer back to that. I recommend as well that your older family members, people that are in your household, do put this into the oven because it's been preheated so it'll be quite hot. Um, if you're helping with this, just make sure you use an oven glove and you are being supervised. Okay, so I'm just going to open the oven and then pop this kind of in the middle and make sure there's not a, um, a shelf just above because if it rises, you don't want to squish the cake. So I'm going to pop that in and then just close that and leave it to do its magic. So um, that's all for today, really. Um, whilst you're waiting for it to cook though, it's a really good time to help people tidy up the kitchen. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of mess now in my kitchen. So I'll have enough time to get this all tidy and then we can have a slice of cake as a reward um, once that's cooked. 
okay? If you don't like the banana bread, what I tend to do is slice it and you can put um, either some chocolate spread on it or you can have a bit of peanut butter maybe. Um, it's quite nice warmed in the microwave for a few seconds. Have fun!